new Splinter Cell game. We've wanted one for such a long time, and in many cases one that really feels like a Splinter Cell game and not a big shooty, big shooty shooty game. Well, Ubisoft have had a very fun time with anything Tom Clancy recently. Of course, there's been the awesome stuff like uh, Siege, right? Big thumbs up there. But they have had a lot of bizarreness, a lot of bizarreness um, as of late. Um, now, of course, the namesake, Tom Clancy himself, uh, passed away in October 2013. And really, since then, there's been a lot of Tom Clancy games coming out uh, of, of Ubisoft. You know, that's, that's it's a pretty big name. I think a licensing agreement that is now... I would wonder how many people know of Tom Clancy as, like, a video game franchise more than they know of Tom Clancy, the novels, and, like, the Ryanverse and all that stuff. I'd, I'd really wonder. I, I feel like definitely, definitely, especially among gamers, Tom Clancy is a Ubisoft name more than it is an yeah. author. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, right. Tom Clancy games. So, some of these titles, um, you know, Division and its sequel, Ghost Recon uh, Breakpoint, have been, uh, you know, experimenting around with different genres, uh, gameplay focuses, and uh, levels of quality. It's always great to see big companies like Ubisoft experiment with levels of quality. <laughs> um, not as, you know, not as much levels of price point, but, uh, mm. I, don't, I mean, there's a bit of that. They're going a lot free-to-play these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no um, one's so happy with that. You can do a lot with the Tom Clancy uh, license generally speaking, but a lot of criticism has been leveled at Ubisoft for, I mean, over-relying on it and their willingness to just just kind of throw Tom Clancy at friggin' everything just to see what sticks almost. Uh, because Tom Clancy has got certain connotations, right? And I do feel that they, they're starting to use it rather disingenuously. I mean, if you think about what a Tom Clancy like book or something like that is, it isn't exactly Tom Clancy Elite Squad, the mobile game. I mean, that said, there's Lord of the Rings War or whatever it's called in mobile. Don't go near that. Another strange one. Tom Clancy's Axe Defiant with a punky visual style that is using elements from other Tom Clancy games, but like you look at its art and it's like, th th what? Yeah, kind of a little <laughs> bit. What if, what if we took Ghost Recon and Division, and then crossbred them with Watch Dogs for some reason, I guess? Yeah, but like the really punky Watch Dogs. Yeah. Like, not your man and his iconic scarf and hat oh, yeah, Watch Dogs. More Legion-y or Watch Dogs 2, kind of. Yeah, they? yeah. So they've been doing this weird thing tonally, because, I mean, the people who are traditionally like Tom Clancy games, it was the old Rainbow Sixes that were really hardcore. Mm. Um, you know, it was that, it was Splinter Cell, and it's so different now. Now, of course, for other Tom Clancy games in the pipeline, there's Rainbow Six Extraction with the, the Zombies, an extremely delayed game from, of course, the first point of that basically being an in-game event in Rainbow Six Siege that was quite well received. And then, of course, the Division Heartland, which is their next big thing for the Division. Now, when you think of Ghost Recon, you generally think sneaky, squad-based gameplay, teamwork, using your actual brain, maybe if you're going for Graw, a little bit of the, you know, the, the technology as well. But generally speaking, like, especially if you look at the old, older, uh, you know, just the older stuff. You know what it's like, guys. Come on. Uh, and then you see Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where, you know, we have a micropayment store with time savers, where we have guns with, like, stats on them. And, you know, but you do that stuff too much, and then suddenly you're fighting drones that are bullet sponges, yeah. and now you have some of the division in your Ghost Recon, and you're very confused. Because mm. what Ghost Recon is supposed to be is, you know, a headshot's a one hit all the time. You know, it's only two or three body shots. It's like it's supposed to feel like actual, you know, authenticity, I suppose. So Breakpoint totally shot the bed in that. Uh, then, of course, there was Ghost Recon Frontline, which we mentioned recently, which is basically mixing in you know, a little bit of your Battle Royale stuff, also some Escape from Tarkov, that was received so poorly during its announcement that it was immediately delayed. So that's fun. Um... Yeah, so basically, you know, free-to-play framework, uh, challenging 102 players to complete missions while dealing with each other, um, which, to be honest, right, as a game format, real cool, happy with that. But I think it's just when people think about Ghost Recon, ain't exactly, well, maybe, maybe is not what uh, what they what they want. And it's, it's that thing where it feels like Ubisoft are continually trying to make entries in a gameplay genre in a way where it feels like it's their franchises, their their IP, I suppose, fitting into pre-established gameplay molds instead of just being their own thing. I really think that is the vibe that people are getting from this. 
So that's basically been going on there. Now then, we've got Plan Cell trying to uh, change things up by reverting to old ways. So it's like Ubisoft have just kind of got bored of making the sorts of games people want. I mean, if you like Ghost Recon Wildlands, why the hell do they give you a breakpoint? <laughs> What's going on there? Other than so they could put a store in it and put time savers in it and uh, try to get some of that Assassin's Creed live service, you know, going on. Um, so maybe there's a plan C. Looking back to things that actually were going well, right? So there are several reports here that Ubisoft have greenlit the first mainline Splinter Cell title in nearly a decade. So Tom Henderson writer for VGC and Merchant of Leaks, appears to be responsible for this one, saying that multiple development resources say a full game has been put into production in the hopes of winning back all the fans they alienated with um, attempted mobile and VR-based franchise revivals. Ha <laughs> uh, This new Splinter Cell, if it exists, uh, will likely have to, I mean, not only bring Sam Fisher back and make him cool again, but also kind of show that, hey, here's a Tom Clancy game that's actually what you fucking want. Uh, of course, they screw that up and we'll be in a situation where they've screwed up Ghost Recon, where they've screwed up, uh, you know, they've screwed up Tom Clancy. Maybe Rainbow Six is still safe because of Siege. Broadly speaking, not really great. Maybe they'll bring back, remember the, the voice control Tom Clancy Endor? game? And War. Maybe they'll bring that one back. God, I hope not. Uh, yeah. So it will be interesting to see what this is like because the last one was Splinter Cell Blacklist in 2013. Now, um, of course, their CEO last year said that it would need to evolve before it could make a comeback. Now, here's the thing, Eves. I don't much like what you seem to think when you say evolve because you've evolved most of your Tom Clancy things in the wrong direction. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want Sam Fisher to be trying to get a legendary knife that does like, you know, slightly more backstab damage. Because that's the direction you motherfuckers are going in. <laughs> we know. And I think that's maybe the problem. How the hell do you fit Splinter Cell into that? And I think there is one game that could be the total savior here. Now, there's a there's a big old, uh, there's a big old problem we'll just have to contend with. It's probably going to be a live service. Mm. There is one live service stealthy game that's really good. It's called Hitman. Yep. It's the new Hitman as much as it does have... It's live service elements can be a real pain in the ass and can be frustrating. However, there's a whole bunch of that that's actually pretty good. The way that like they, they change up the missions, they give people challenges. If you're like a dedicated Hitman like player, you are going to have a great time with that. Yeah. Uh, now, the thing is that Hitman and Splinter Cell, they're both stealth games, but they're so freaking different that I really think that you could get something going there. Now, the thing with Splinter Cell is, and I think by virtue of it being Tom Clancy, it's going to be more of a political thriller. And that's going to be their big difference because Hitman could easily live serviceify itself by just, I mean, having such a cool gameplay sandbox. Splinter Cell hasn't been as much that. Zen does make me wonder if they're going to bring a little bit of like Metal Gear into Sam Fisher, which I really hope they don't. Because uh, I, I still want it to that. be a serious feeling political thriller. Mm. Um, so, yeah, hard, uh, hard to know. Um the last time we did a Splinter Cell, we had lots of pressure from all the fans actually saying, don't change it, don't do this, don't do that. So some of the teams are more anxious to work in the brand. Now, there are some things and some people that are now uh, looking at the brand, taking care of the brand. So at one point you will see something, but I can't say more than that. So all of this just pussyfooting around the brand. And now we've got some sort of uh, you know leaks that something property is happening. Yeah, as long as they're not taking care of the brand in the way they've taken care of other brands. Yeah. Which is, yeah. you know, take them out the back and put one in their head. So this project is supposedly, according to these leaks, in early production and is being developed by a studio outside of um, the traditional Montreal studio that did it. So we basically don't know. That's that. But apparently there's a new mainline Splinter Cell. I think this one is a little bit of a make or break and... We will know what Ubisoft views of its portfolio, I think, based on this. And it is just mm. weird. You would have thought that after Breakpoint had such a disaster and they delayed so much of their slate that they would have learned a few fundamental lessons. I think they thought they made specific mistakes with specific games and maybe didn't think enough about their broad direction. Yeah, I think uh, we'll kind of get a little bit into that more as we go through their other stuff. But I think generally the problem is I don't think they actually learned. I think they thought, oh, no, the problem is that these games are underbaked which means we just need to give the games more time. You know, this is the developer's fault. 
or our resource allocation problem. It's not a problem of our creative direction, which I think it fundamentally is more than anything else. Yeah. And when we go through their franchises, it does get interesting. Oh, it gets bad. Because, so for Watch Dogs, right? Like, Legion seems to be in commercial success. You wouldn't have known. No. You would not have known whatsoever. Um, And its reviews weren't as glowing as I think the hype. Not not at all. Um, So, uh, who knows? Assassin's Creed, look, Valhalla, pretty well received. Little bit of uh, frustration, of course, over what they're doing with the monetization all of that stuff, you know, it has its pros and its cons, that game. Of course, they're moving into this big Assassin's Creed Infinity thing, uh, and this is, here's something recently from a verified leaker. Um, Infinity is inspired by the Helix from Unity. Each entry will be a small linear experience with semi-open world levels like a Hitman game, and each Assassin story will feature multiple missions. Ubisoft is also planning to remake and retell older Assassin's Creed games in Infinity. It is still too early to determine what old games will be retold. Lastly, a new story will be added over time for an additional cost. Open world Assassin's Creed will be developed at the same time as Infinity. That's weird to me because I'm a lot more interested in something like Assassin's Creed 2, where Mm. it's just, hello, would you like a character (laughs) and a story that you go and do with just no bullshit? Yep, they're clearly clearly not interested in that from a a business perspective. Each... Entry will be a small linear experience with semi-open world levels like the Hitman games, and each Assassin story will feature multiple missions. It's like, if that means that we get basically a series of anthologies, like smaller, yeah. basically like Assassin's Creed anthologies, that could be really cool. Definitely. And that could be more interesting to me than the big open world games because I don't have 700,000 million hours. <laughs> um, so who knows? It's bold. I'll give them that. If Look, if it does mean really high-quality, small linear experiences like what we were used to with the past Assassin's Creed games, then I'll be pretty happy with that. And if there's a little bit more of a playing like an assassin uh, sort of, you know, uh, like sandbox within those missions, that would also be pretty cool. Just saying that because Hitman was mentioned. Mm-hmm. That could maybe give you more of that Assassin's vibe than we've got in the past and also got since it kind of went RPG-ish. Hmm. Uh, Far Cry. Well... Yeah, I mean, Far Cry 6 is Far Cry 5 is Far Cry 4 is Far Cry 3. <laughs> Obviously, there have been iterations and improvements. I don't want to take that away from them. Um, but the games do feel quite formulaic, and it's just the sort of thing, if you like a Far Cry game, you know exactly what you're going to get. So, happy days if that's what you want. But, uh, you know, generally people are like, this is a solid game. Villain's not a great use of that actor, but, eh, it's a solid, pretty good game. But it's kind of the same, and you know what it is. Yeah, and that's been the main reception. Yeah, it's a problem where if people don't care... Like, you're not doing your job correctly. You can make a perfectly fine game, but if people don't care, then you're losing opportunity there. It's kind of kind of sad to see, honestly, after Far Cry being so important to people. But Yeah, and um, then, of course, Prince of Persia, the remake, uh, sort of looks so bad that um, when it was announced, instead of releasing three months after the announcement, uh, it still isn't out and won't be until 2022. <laughs> so that's what's going on there. Um, seems like a big old failure of, um, well, a massive failure of allocating development resources. They fired out this to um, one of their studios located in India that seemingly wasn't like ready. So it's the sort of thing I imagine they just didn't get the full support that they actually needed to produce a game like this. Yeah, I mean, isn't wasn't it similar with uh, Singapore? Was it their Singapore studio that, that was really, really dodgy? Yeah, there's a lot of, like, of dodge in Singapore. Yeah, it's alone. like they set that up to make use of a government grant, but actually didn't even finish the project. So it was something along those lines, I think. Yeah, yeah, and then, of course, you know, Black Flag. Not Black Flag, that was the good one. Um, mm. Skull and Bones and yeah. all the issues there. And then there's Hyperscape. And here's the thing with Hyperscape. Apparently, it's actually pretty great with uh, nice gameplay innovations, and it, it, it's a really solid game. It's just that weird thing of nobody cares. And it's, again, that thing, I think, of they have made an entry in a gameplay genre, but it's just like, oh, this is Ubisoft's insert game template here. <laughs> now, in the minutia, there's probably a lot of innovation and in new things, but broadly speaking, you know, people look at things as an entry within a, a genre, and they're, you know, Ubisoft are a bit late. It was already a saturated genre. Um, so it completely missed Ubisoft's expectations in October 2020. So they've started an overhaul, but there is uh, little progress so far. Roller Champions, where is it? What's going on? There's been no update since uh, early 2021, which is when it was supposed to release. So Yeah, that one's a weird one. We'll see. Trying to find that in research is impossible. They just haven't updated. 
last update like of note was hey this game's gonna be out in early 2021 and then they mentioned some community uh, reporting tools in 2021 and not a word since yeah it's it, ubisoft was so bizarre <laughs> yeah. so strange so that just makes me what the hell, what is going on um it seems like a creative direction thing where they're just a bit out of touch where they don't seem to know what their player bases want. They seem to think that they need to produce entries in an overall sort of thing, and that the Ubisoft people will all go there. But instead, maybe it's less about people being Ubisoft fans. It's far more about like making a genuinely fantastic game, leveraging the unique things about your IP. And whenever Tom Clancy feels watered down and misused, that just goes completely against what's going to be exciting and appealing to a customer. Hmm. Um, so yeah, and then also, I think as, as Adam puts quite well, Tracing ch uh, chasing trends, but very slowly. Hmm. Yeah, that, that that's a case where they're like, it feels like they're going for like data driven development, but with massive amounts of lag. Yeah, that's what it feels like to me. And the, then is the other thing going on, which is the harassment allegations, where there's been a lot going on there. Um, they've said a lot, but there is well, there's a new report from Kotaku saying that um, even last year, in the midst of their stuff. They were failing to address employee complaints. A group has appeared, um, a better Ubisoft, who are you know, kind of like in solidarity with a better uh, ABK. Um, they've called for industry-wide change and in how all of this stuff is handled. They're claiming that Ubisoft are continuing to ignore their complaints. Um, and yeah, the A Better Ubisoft Twitter feed keeps a running total of how many days it's been since an official reply. Um, so uh, the most recent, 74 days, now it's like 86 um, so I guess they are just content to do whatever they're doing internally and, uh, you know, it'll go away. Of course, their key demands are basically just the promoting and moving of known offenders from studio to studio, which we have seen a little bit of. Um, where, I mean, <laughs> to take a very uh, Ireland thing, it's a bit like sending the dodgy priest to a different parish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the second one, uh, them wanting a seat at the table and how some of these things are dealt with. Um, then cross-industry collaboration, agreeing to set ground rules and processes that all studios can use, and um, stuff uh, heavily involving employees in non-management positions and union reps. So basically, those demands haven't really been met. And that's that for Ubisoft. Essentially, where is the ship going? Seemingly everywhere at once with not much of a clear direction. Yeah, it's being pulled apart from every direction, trying to find all of, like, we have to have a win in all of these genres, instead of thinking, what will customers want? What do they want to play? We don't care. Make a genre. And then the ship will, in the end of, you know, yeah. if it doesn't go forward, it will just sink into the sea. And Ubisoft used to be known for being one of the biggest, greatest publishers. And now I think most people look at them and go, eh, I don't care. What are you doing? Yeah, you're not interesting. I think, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, I think the, um, oh, the, the Stephanie Sterling, the, oh, Ubisoft. Yeah. That is exactly, yeah. that's just exactly how you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you see, you know, they, they've, they do another, oh, Tom Clancy's X defiant front lines. <laughs> You're like, oh, Ubisoft. Hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's quite, you know, it's, it's quite on point. So there we go. Oh, Ubisoft, what are you doing? You know what? If you give me a good, Say this, if you give me a Assassin's Creed game that's just a, a really good, like, sort of stealth historical thriller sort of thing, like the previous Assassin's Creed, I'll be really happy. You give me a Splinter Cell that is a good, stealthy uh, political thriller thing, like Tom Clancy uh, sort of deal, I'll be really happy. You give me Ghost Recon that is, you know, fun, sort of special forces-y business that feels, like, pretty grounded and authentic, I'll be really happy. You do the same with Rainbow Six, I'll be really happy. Like... Keep the division for your numbersy live service things. Come on. We liked your franchises for a reason. Now you're moving away and now people like them less. It's not it's not hard. Now that said, this is probably me speaking for like the core Tom Clancy fans. Mm -hmm. Right now they have an audience and a customer base that is larger than core Tom Clancy fans. And yep. that really is uh that is the thing. Twitch I'd say maybe, I don't know, try to make a new franchise like you did with Watch Dogs and uh and stuff but anyway right that's them uh you know what um please clean up your shit inside and start making games that consumers want and uh, with that incredibly incredibly brave advice <laughs> farewell <laughs> have a great day see you next time